your fitness business podcast snapshot. We start with a complete overview of the $1 a day Facebook ad framework. Dennis shares some of his favorite video tips and we discuss what fitness facilities should measure when it comes to Facebook ad conversions. All of that and more coming up in today's show. Welcome to the industry's leading business podcast for fitness owners and managers. This month's interviews are brought to you by our podcast partner, OneFitStop. OneFitStop is a modern fitness studio software built for the growing multi-location studio, providing scheduling, client management, programming and payment collection tools, and more that will set your business up to grow, grow, grow. To find out more, go to onefitstomp.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Hi, everyone. Welcome along and thank you for joining me. My special guest this week is Dennis Yu, the Chief Executive Officer of Blitz Metrics, a digital marketing company which partners with schools to train young adults. Dennis's program centers around mentorship, helping students grow their expertise to manage social campaigns for enterprise clients like Golden State Warriors, Nike, and Rosetta Stone. He's an internationally recognized lecturer in Facebook marketing and has spoken in 17 countries. He's been featured in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, LA Times, National Public Radio, TechCrunch, Fox News, and more. He's also the co-author of Facebook Nation, a textbook that is taught in over 700 colleges and universities. And one more thing, how about this? Dennis ran collegiate cross country at SMU and has completed over 20 marathons, including a 70 mile ultra marathon. How amazing is that? Now in just a minute, we're going to hear from Dennis all about his dollar a day Facebook ad strategy. But first, here's a message from our friends at One Fit Stop. If you're tired of old studio software that's constantly raising prices without increasing value, then talk to OneFitStop, where their platform is constantly evolving to meet the needs of growing studio businesses. Go to OneFitStop.com to find out more. Enjoy this week's interview with my special guest, Dennis Yu. Dennis, I have to tell you, I am so, so excited about your interview. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm so excited, Chantel. And my goodness, how many years have we been doing this? Five years every well, week? Yeah, you know what? We are, we are five years this year, every single week for five years. Wow. Dedication. <laughs> yeah, it's definite dedication. But you know what? We do it because we love it. And we do it because we know that we're helping fitness professionals out there to become better at running their business. And today I'm so excited because you know what, like I was doing my research about you and learning about all of your background and your expertise. And I hear people like Mari Smith and Michael Stelzner talking about you are the man when it comes to Facebook advertising. So I cannot wait to dive into this with you today because you actually say that it's possible to spend just a dollar a day for a mm-hmm. successful Facebook ad campaign. And I know that the FBP family out there are going to think that sounds absolutely phenomenal. So can you tell us about that framework? Think about it this way. Can you think back to an incredible day that you had where things just went your way? You were in a great mood. You had great relationships with your customers, with your family. You had a great workout, right? You can imagine those times in your life, right? Now imagine that you could have that moment over and over and over and over again. What would that be worth to you? Or when you have a winning lottery ticket, you can continue to play the lottery over and over and over again. Instead of the $5, you could press rewind and put $10,000 into it. Would you like to do that? That sounds amazing. (laughs) It's like a virtual time machine. Now that's how it works with Facebook because when you make an ad that wins you can continue to put money on it. Now, what we see with people getting started with Facebook is they have willy-nilly, no direction. They do all these random things and maybe out of every 10, out of every 20 attempts, they might find a winner 
but they don't know how to identify the winner. So then they just continue to make more ads. They continue to post more. They continue to tweet more. But what if we could find which of those items actually were a winner if they knew what the magic formula was? And then they could let that live forever at a dollar a day, at $5 a day, $10 a day. So we were with Keep, which used to be called Infusionsoft. And we were making one minute videos talking about marketing automation and how to do fitness professionals don't worry about you know whether this is relevant to personal trainers or large gyms, but just understand the idea. So we were doing some training on email marketing. And we had different videos that we were trying to teach the angle of why marketing automation was important and how to set that up. And the first 10 or 20 videos were terrible. But we only put a dollar a day against each of them, meaning we spent $7. And Australian dollars, it's even less. So $7, right? One week, a dollar a day. And after about two weeks, we found the winner. And that winner, we put $50 on it, put $100 on it. Eventually, we put $1.3 million on that one video because it performed so much better than all the other videos. And the dollar a day technique is nothing more than a series of progressive, scientific, methodic testing of what is working, of the content that you have against the audiences that you have. Imagine that as a combination, right? Like a lottery ticket's a combination. When you roll two dice, that's a combination, right, of two numbers that pop up. When you pull two cards, that's a combination. Now, if you want two aces and you pull two random cards, the probability of that's relatively low, right? It's, uh, what is it, one in, uh, well, eight, how many, 14? (laughs) (laughs) Times one times one in 13 are the odds that you're going to get two aces in a row, right? That was quick. (laughs) That's a probability theory. It's a combination, not a permutation. I used to teach math. I used to teach statistics, actually. But the the idea of a dollar a day is, look, you already know as a fitness professional that routine is what counts, right? You can have a great workout, but you got to go to the gym every day or you have to have a schedule that you adhere to, even on the days that you don't feel so good. And that's what you tell tell your customers. That's what you do with your trainers. That's what you do with your operations. Now, why wouldn't you do that with your marketing? Now, the formula is awareness, consideration, conversion. Three steps in the funnel. Some people call that no like, and trust. Top, middle, bottom of the funnel. And the top of the funnel is the why. So why did you start your business? Why do you do what you do? Why would people want to come in? Why, why is any it's little stories? Like the, how do the fires in, in Sydney, in, in New South Wales feel? Like what is it? Can you tell a particular story, right? And the middle of the funnel, you are teaching people about knowledge that you have. Here's how you do a curl. Here's how you calculate a good plan. Here's how you hire a good person. Here's how you get people into the gym, right? And then the what is where you're selling. So you just make one minute videos against each stage of the funnel. Every day you might pump out a couple or maybe you do them all in batch. So you record continuously for 20 minutes and then you cut them into one minute videos. You put them on Facebook and you boost each of them for a dollar a day. So let's say that that my friend, Matthew Janusek, who's the CEO of Escape Fitness, he's a fitness equipment manufacturer. We were in the gym recently. The guy is fit, even though he's 50. I'm jealous. And we recorded a series of videos where he talked about his equipment. He talked about what makes it more durable. He talked about his stories growing up, several of them. He talked about why he lives in Newport Beach and how he's making an effort to go to the beach more. Even though he lives there, he didn't go to the beach. So what's the point of living in a fancy neighborhood? He talked about how the materials and his equipment like dumbbells and barbells are all made in his own factories in China because of quality control and what some of the stories are and how do you pour rubber in the right way and what kind of compounds will crack versus last and also getting people to sign up for his program on seven mistakes that gym owners make when they're designing a new gym, right? Things like that. And we recorded all of that in about an hour and then we chopped it up into 30 or 40 one minute videos all in one go. And when people understand that especially in the fitness industry. And I think the fitness industry folks don't, for some reason, when it comes to marketing, they just throw out the idea that there's processes, even though everything else is governed by a process, especially if social media should be governed by a process. Then you put it out there and then people in your hometown, people in the target market you want to see will see that because the algorithm, like think about how smart Facebook is, Chantel, right? When you go on the Facebook, Facebook knows who you are. Facebook knows what you've eaten. Facebook's listening on your phone, right? Now imagine you can put that work, put, put that engine, that intelligent brain to work for you. And if you put out those little stories, 60 second vertical videos or square videos, just authentic moments where you're documenting what's going on 
in your gym, documenting what you're doing as a fitness business professional. When, you know, how do you deal with a difficult client? How do you manage your schedule? How do you eat? How do you do whatever it is, right? Then people will naturally relate to you and assume yourself. But the key is once you have that content out there, those three stages of the funnel, you put it out there for a dollar a day, and then you look at which ones perform, and invariably, one in 10 will become a winner because it'll just get higher engagement and you could never predict it what the winner will be. You'll think like people like me who've done it a long time, I'll be, I'll pretend to be so smart. Like, yeah, this, this one's going to do better than that one. And I'm wrong. Every, every time, right? Let the data tell you Facebook's data driven. Facebook will target for you. Facebook knows who to show what based on, you know, what people are clicking like on in the newsfeed. They have all the data. You just got to feed the system what it wants instead of trying to outsmart the system or get mad at the system or say, oh, Facebook just wants all my money and I hate Mark Zuckerberg. I'm not going to pay money for ads or I'm getting squeezed out of these feeds. So it's not worth spending time on Facebook or the, my customer base isn't on Facebook. Those are all just excuses. Before we continue chatting about the dollar a day Facebook ad strategy, I first asked Dennis to briefly share some of his favorite video tips with us. Here's what he had to say. My favorite thing to do, Chantel, is I interview other people. Mm -hmm. I meet people that are, for example, just an hour ago, we were with our friend Jared Garage, who has, what is it, 1.5 million YouTube subscribers. And he pulled up in his Ferrari and his Maserati and is telling us about the Lamborghini that he's working on. And what a great opportunity. When you meet someone, you're interviewing them, right? It's not that you're trying to show off on social media. It's not, look at me. It's, hey, here's a friend of mine. Let me tell you about something I learned from him. So I'm trying to share. I'm making it about the audience. And when you have that mindset of sharing and you're sharing here, but let me, let me give you a couple of things that people miss. If, if all this makes sense about, you know, being human and relating, you hear that all the time. Here's the trick that other people won't tell you. You create what's called a public figure page, which is a page, not a profile. All of us have profiles, but it is a page called, so there's the Chantel Broderick profile. You as a user, right? Mm-hmm. Then there's the Chantel Broderick Facebook public figure page, which is a business page that has the name Chantel Broderick and it has your same beautiful profile picture on it, right? And it's a business page so that you can run ads against it because you can't boost from your profile. You can only boost off of a page, right? And it gives you analytics. You don't get analytics off of a profile. So you put all this content, which, is, which are the three stages, why, how, and what, right? Three stages of the funnel, getting pe- you know, people to deepen a relationship with you, but you put it on your public figure page. If there's something that you post on your profile, repost that, re-upload that video to your public figure page, and then you can boost it. Literally, if you operate a gym in a particular city, Facebook is so smart, you can literally take those one-minute videos, post them there, geo-target, five miles, 10 miles radius of your location, and Facebook will do the work for you. It'll be incredible, especially if you have something we call digital plumbing set up, which is the pixels and conversions for when you get phone calls and leads or store visits, which is my favorite for those that have physical locations. So let's say it's, uh, what's the name of my friend who owns the, it's not called Zen Fitness in downtown LA. I forgot the name of his gym. I was just there. But let's say you have the, the business page of your gym and let's say you have the public figure page, literally look there to see what the engagement is. Right. So you're getting at least a 10% engagement rate, meaning the number of likes, comments, and shares, add that up, divided by the number of people that saw it. So if you had in total 50 people that liked, commented, or shared out of 500 people that saw it, that's a 10% engagement rate. That's pretty good. Now you also want to look at what your reach was. So if you have, let's say, 3,000 fans, and I think on Instagram, what do you have, like 5,000? You can just use the same formula. Oh, you're at 2,942 as of today. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see 20% of those people seeing it. So 20%. On that is 600. So if I could get 600, 600 of your 3,000 to see it, and then of the 600, I'm at 10%. So if I get 60 people to like, comment, or share, that means I'm doing pretty well. And if you look at all your posts, you're going to find that some of them will really stand out. And the ones that stand out, understand why. Was it something you said? Was it the scenery? Was it the time of day? Was it a, a question that sparked engagement? And then boost it right? Boost it, meaning put some money on it and then try to make more of the same. Figure out what, what the thing was that people engage with. Maybe they like puppies. 
or trail views, right? You got a lot of these puppy photos or maybe winning awards, right? And just do more of what's working. It's literally that simple, but that's what people miss. It makes total sense. Dennis. I want to talk about uh, our audience and how we, how we actually zero in on a really specific audience because obviously with most fitness facilities out there around the world, they're going to be in a physical location and the people that are going to come to their, their facility, they're going to be within a, you know, a five-minute drive, let's say, or a 10-minute drive at the most. So you talk about this concept of a hyper-targeted audience. How targeted can we actually get when it comes to our Facebook advertising? Chantel, you can target down to one person. And that's kind of creepy. And it's something I've unfortunately made a career about. I've even been on national TV on CNN to talk about how you can target down to one person. Because I'm not saying do this, but just so you understand, Facebook's system is so powerful. You can literally upload an email address into something that's called a custom audience. Or you can literally retarget against someone who's been to your website and show just that one person an ad. I've got a friend in LA who targeted his girlfriend with ads all over the place, right? To try to creep her out. (laughs) We had Rosetta Stone as a client for three years, right? The language software company. And I wish my friend, Eric, who is a CMO, happy birthday. And I targeted him. And just for fun, I targeted everyone who worked in marketing at their particular building in Roslyn, Virginia. And I got a call the next day from the chief legal officer for a a takedown, right? A cease and desist. And she thought that we were spending millions of dollars advertising. And I went up to her and I said, we spent 75 cents and we've reached 110 people out of the 300 people in marketing, right? That's how targeted you can be. But don't do that because if you are trying to reach people who are going to potentially become customers, of your gym, maybe because they are not aware, or maybe a friend is a customer and Facebook can expose that relationship. All you need to do is target the people who've been to the site, the people who've engaged on your business page, the people that are in your CRM, meaning phone numbers and emails, and then let the system do the work for you. Rely upon Facebook's intelligence to do that. That's called a custom audience, meaning uploading the data you have from all these other places. Now you do have to go inside business manager, inside another tool there called audience manager to upload all those, which is a one-time setup. You can hire one of our young adults to do that for $50, $100, or go through the videos and do it yourself. It's not that hard. You don't have to be an engineer. And then Facebook is doing the sub-targeting for you. You don't have to worry about, do they live downtown? Or maybe they're just commuting downtown. Facebook knows. You don't have to worry about, did they actually you know, walk by the gym, or maybe they actually stopped inside. Facebook knows the difference. They know what kind of car you drive. They know which of your friends are also working out. They know what you're eating, right? Facebook knows that. So let them do that other sub-targeting. You just put in those one-minute videos. And it could be pictures too. Just don't do before and after. That's what you'll get shut down for fitness. Especially Mm -hmm. if you don't make any kind of claims, especially vague ones related to weight loss, that will get you shut down. And if you get shut down, they won't give you your account back. So I get a lot of people, thousands that literally come to us saying, hey, we got banned by Facebook. And I'll say, okay, you you made a claim, didn't you? Or you didn't have a clear privacy policy. Or you violated the 20% text rule. Or you had a before and after picture. Please do not post before and after pictures. Especially important in our industry. And Dennis, I just want to go back on something because you kind of breeze through it there. But I think it's really important because you just threw in the word, your young adults and and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're talking about the people that go through your program and you train uh, through blitz metrics that you train to actually be able to, to understand all of this and assist with all of this. Am I correct in saying that? Do you want to just explain that a little bit more to us? So mentorship has always been important to me. And Al Casey, who is the CEO of American Airlines, was my original mentor. That was 22, 23 years ago. And I saw there was a disconnect between having good grades and having a great job. So mentorship, real world experience, not just getting A's on tests was so important. And that's something that I have brought into every job I've ever had. When I was at Yahoo, I hired a bunch of kids from Stanford. I I hired friends of mine that were unemployed that didn't have engineering degrees, right? And I feel that other working professionals should be doing the same thing as well. And thus we've lost millions of dollars 
hiring young adults, providing training. We work with a number of universities. You've probably have seen it, the training we've done together with Google and Facebook and other folks because we want to help these young adults start their social media agencies. For those of you who would like to know more about the Blitzmetrics program, or if you'd like to work with one of the young adults that Dennis just mentioned, then go to today's show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and you'll find a web link where you can get more information. Now let's dive back into the interview. I always think it's important to understand the metrics that are available to us when investing in Facebook ads. So I asked Dennis to specifically explain what fitness facilities can measure when it comes to conversions. Take a listen. So Chantal, there are 13 primary objectives, business objectives, that you can ask Facebook to optimize for. From a conversion standpoint, we like to see for physical gyms, the in-store visit. Because if you can get them in to your location, then it's up to the sales team or the trainers or the front off, you know, the, the people at the front desk to be able to make those folks feel welcome, give them a tour, sign them up for a particular program. Maybe there's a new year special, whatever it might be. And Facebook is not meant to drive the sale completely. And if you are a boutique gym and you are not selling the $50 a month kind of program or you're, you're doing high-end personal fitness training, you know that Facebook isn't going to, Facebook can drive the awareness, but it can't drive the close. That requires talking to somebody. So the cost per store visit, we like to see under $10. If you can get under $10, usually that means you're doing pretty well. Because Facebook can track, remember, they know where you are. Facebook's on your phone. That's why they busted out Facebook as a separate app instead of Facebook on the website because they want to track where you are, right? Big Brother's listening to that. I'm sure Zuckerberg can listen to our conversation. <laughs> The second one is the cost per call. So if you're trying to drive people to a call for a consultation, to talk about their needs, to plan goals, to teach them something, to sign up for a free program, whatever it might be, calls work really well, but you have to have a very clear call to action and your people have to be ready on the phone. We find that the smaller gyms, are usually terrible when it comes to answering the phone during business hours within two rings. Remember, you used to answer the phone within two rings, but sometimes you'd be right there, but you'd have to wait. Some people would wait until the second ring because they didn't want to seem like they're desperate. Thank you. Know you. Yeah, but you want to answer the phone right away. So if you can answer the phone right away, then the cost per call is very good. Third type is the cost per conversion, which is someone filling out a form or completing a checkout. So if you are selling... Let's say our, our buddy who sells King, he, uh, King Keto, where he sells training courses and, and diets and other programs on how do you lose weight, and it's all virtual training, then the conversion pixel, right? When that pixel fires, when someone bought a course for $297 or signed up for a, an event, right? Some kind of seminar conference for a couple thousand dollars, that's there too. But if you're a physical location, the in-store visit and the cost per call is pretty good probably a a distant fourth, but some people are using it as a landing page view. And if you're not getting 50 conversions per week per ad set, then you can step one level up and that's people who are visiting a particular page on your website. And if they get to that particular page, it's indicative of they're actually really interested instead of people who are just on the homepage, right? But people who want to scroll down your services page or your contact page, but maybe didn't press the submit button, then you can reach those kinds of people who didn't necessarily convert, but maybe were very close to. That makes total sense, Dennis. Thank you for diving into those different variants there. One of the things that has come to my mind as we've been talking is obviously we've been talking about video and creating these one minute videos, Mm -hmm. but I know that a lot of fitness owners out there uh, post a lot of photos, um, photos, they post a lot of images, still images or Mm -hmm. quote tiles and stuff like that. Is there any point us spending time and energy on posting um, still images or should all of our focus go into video-based content? Well, you want a balanced diet. You want a mix. But, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, especially on Instagram, right, where Mm -hmm. a lot of people are literate, so they're just posting videos or pictures. But a video is a thousand pictures. And what I like about the new iPhones and the modern cameras is that when you take a video, you're actually taking lots and lots of pictures. And by definition, 
you should be shooting in 4K if you use the default settings. But if you're taking a video and there's one particular still along the way, you're actually taking many, many, many photos. So why wouldn't you just do a video? Why wouldn't you do a 15 second video? When you're capturing a moment in that video, you can actually pan, you can show motion. But the beauty is if there's, there's that one moment or there's, you can, you know, the, you can pull out just one frame, right? You can zoom in. You can take pictures that you've already made from a long time ago, provided they're not too long ago, and turn it into a slideshow. You can add text to it. You can add motion to it. But think about this. As people are scrolling through the newsfeed, your potential customers, they are going to stop only when something grabs their attention. And pictures can be Photoshopped. Pictures really... Facebook did a study where they found that those businesses that used, and it'll work for fitness businesses too. Those gyms that use videos have three times the engagement because it's more real, because it's more human and connecting than a picture where it's like, "Eh, it could be stock art. And with a video, you can say something, you can speak to them, you can tell a story. You can't do that in a picture. Dennis, we are coming to that time of the show where we talk about our fit vibration. So for today, can you share with us your final three tips for getting started on the $1 a day Facebook ad strategy. Get your pen ready now for Keep Me's Fit Bizpiration. Number one, point the phone at your face and tell people what you're thinking and feeling, especially if it is personal or it reveals some kind of vulnerability, some kind of challenge or struggle. Two, tell the stories of others. When you have someone who's overcome a particular issue and they're willing to talk about it. You see, people don't go to the gym because they want to go to the gym. They go because of self-esteem, because they want to look good, because they want to be a professional, because they have an event they're training for, because of all these things. Interview other people about their goals. Celebrate. Be that coach. Don't be the self-promotional thing. Oh, come to our gym, $99 or whatever, or free free one week special, whatever. Right? Don't, don't do that. You can still do some of that, right? But tell stories, especially of other people. And number three is go cross channel. So when you find things that are working on Facebook, meaning high engagement, you boost it, still working, share it on Instagram, copy it into Twitter and share it. Turn that video into a blog post. And if you don't like the blog, because people like me, I like to write, but I've been forced into video because that's, you know, cricket kicking and screaming. I'm an engineer, but I have to do video because that's, that's what we have to do. Then turn it into a blog post. You can literally take that video that you made and post it on your blog, just as it is, just with a sentence or two. And now all of a sudden you have a blog post that will start ranking on Google, right? And Google doesn't want to show Facebook links for the reasons that we just mentioned. So now you've got content that can rank anywhere. You can post it to Quora, you can put it on Snapchat, you can put it, and you can literally hire someone from the Philippines or from Fiverr to do that cross posting for you just for a few dollars or maybe every month they do it as a batch. And now you're getting 10 for one, right? Like what, what's your favorite food, Chantel? Favorite food. Oh, top of my head. I'm going to say, oh, I, you know, I have to say chocolate. Chocolate. Is, is that what obvious? Chocolate? I love chocolate. <laughs> what, what kind of chocolate? Name something specific. Oh, do you want a brand or, yeah. or, okay. Here in Australia, I have to say, I love Cadbury's milk chocolate. Oh, I love Cadbury's, especially mm-hmm. during Easter. The milk eggs, you crack them open, they have the syrup. Oh, milk. yeah. <laughs> so imagine you go, you go to the store and you see Cadbury eggs, buy one, get nine free. So 10 for the price of one. How would you feel? Uh, I'd feel like it couldn't possibly be real. But then you see other people carting out truckloads and cartfuls of Cadbury eggs, rushing the store like it's, you know, Mad Max and the end of the world and, you know, yeah. they have to grab everything before the tornado comes. I want, I want to get in on that. Of course. Now, that's what we can still do today in digital marketing, especially on Facebook. So when you find something that resonates on Facebook, and you will if you just put in the time, right? just make videos and you'll be awkward the first few. That's just how it is. But when you have that winner, understand what it is about that winner, about the way you set it, about the background, about the who knows, right? about who's in it, about the topic. And if you understand what that is, don't you think those same people are on Google? Aren't they on Yelp? Aren't they on YouTube? Aren't they on all the other channels out there? Aren't they on email? Of course they are, right? So if you got a winner in one area, 
just copy it over to the other channels and usually it'll work, especially if you boost it to the same audience. All you're doing is finding the intersection between content and targeting, meaning what audiences are motivated by what messages, and then hit them across all the channels. Keep me smarter member retention. Keepme.ai. A huge thank you to Dennis for joining us on the show today. If you would like to learn more about the Dollar a Day Facebook ad strategy, or if you'd love to know more about Blitz Metrics, then make sure you check out today's show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com for all of the contact details. Now, here's a message from our friends at Loud Rumor. Advertising is not expensive. Obscurity is. Being unknown in your own community. And for just $99 a month, you can put an end to all of that. Loud Rumor has worked with over 1,500 fitness studios all over the world. And for only $99, we'll teach you step-by-step -step how to run ad campaigns like some of the largest fitness franchises on the planet. To learn more and get a bunch of sample training videos, go to loudrumorvt.com. Again, that's loudrumorvt.com. Quick Fire 5. This week's Quick Fire 5 guest is Darren Jacobson, the Senior Vice President of Instructor Programming for Zumba Fitness, LLC. Darren, welcome along. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much for having me. We are starting things with our Quick Fire questions. So tell us, why do you do what you do? I do it for, I think, passion for the industry and for the innovation and in industry that keeps moving and the connection with people. I think that's the most important and unique aspect about our industry. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? I would say treat others as you want to be treated is a ritual that I kind of live by. And I think it transcends everything. It also gives guidance from a customer service point of view. Um, and at the end of the day, everything nowadays is very customer centric. So I think that's one of the mantras or rituals that I live by. That is a fantastic ritual. And are there any apps or systems that you use to stay in control of your workload? Well, one of the hacks that I have is I really try not to archive any emails. If there's anything that I need to respond to that's uh, in, my, in my email box, I leave it front and center so that I can see it every day. It's like a red flag in front of me. So I don't go and archive the emails. I strive for a 24 to 48 hour turnaround on communication. And then wherever I can, I embrace different technologies to help me make things a bit more efficient. So there are any of those technologies that you would recommend to the FBP family? Um, I think, you know, when it comes to things like um, social media, scheduling apps are one thing that you can definitely use, makes your life a whole lot easier. Um, and then having a very strong calendar that is up to date and accurate whether it's Google Calendar or whatever that is, definitely helps to be a bit more organized. Yeah, great recommendations. And are there any books, podcasts or blogs that you would recommend to us today? You know, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts recently, but the one book that stood out for me was a book by J.D. Powers and Associates called Satisfaction. And it really talks about the voice of the customer. And that completely changed my perspective on customer service. So, it's J.D. Powers and Associates. The book's called Satisfaction and probably one of the best simple reads that I've had in a long time, which really highlights the importance of listening to your customer and being customer centric. Wow. Thank you so much for that recommendation. We haven't had that one before, which gets me really excited because we love new book recommendations. So I'll make sure that I grab the link for that and uh, put it in today's show notes. And tell us to us very briefly, what topic are you going to be focusing on during our main interview? I'm going to be talking about best practices in group exercise, training and management. And I think this is an area of the industry that is often misunderstood but it is a critical aspect within the industry. And so focusing on different best practices in group exercise, whether it's group exercise training, hiring, management of group exercise, looking at different metrics, et cetera, this is something that I'm very passionate about and I think the industry needs to learn a bit more about as well. Excellent. Well, Darren, thank you so much for joining us for the Quick Fire Five and we will chat to you shortly for your main interview. Thanks so much. I seriously cannot wait to share that interview with you all next week. Thank you to Darren for joining us today for the Quick Fire Five. Now here's a message from our podcast partner, MyZone. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that leverages personal goal setting, gamification, and social platforms to motivate your members. To find out more, 
Go to myzone.org. Get ready for this week's bonus segment, your extra injection of information, education, and inspiration to strengthen your fitness business. This week, I have a special bonus segment for you all. Sheldon McBee is the personal training director at Universal Athletic Club, and he's also a speaker at URSA 2020. Sheldon has put together a 90-second overview about his URSA presentation, and it sounds awesome. Take a listen. Hey, my name is Sheldon McBee, and I am the personal training director at Universal Athletic Club right here in the lovely Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And I'm thrilled once again to be presenting at this year's URSA 2020. Uh, I could actually say I'm doing more of a facilitating. This is a fireside chat, and we'll be talking about creating connection and trust for personal training and small group training sales. What's really cool about this event, this session, is that you have a chance to not just learn from me, but with your own peers on best practices. All in the name of driving up conversion percentage with prospective clients, mainly by touch points, human to human touch points through networking, new member integration, multi-trialing, and getting those micro commitments that help inspire people to want a coach to help guide them moving forward in their health and fitness journey. What's even better is that you walk away with an action plan and in the fitness industry, we love accountability. So there's also a bit of accountability with this session. I look forward to seeing you guys there. It'll be on Thursday, March 19th at 2 p.m. So look forward to seeing you. Given that we have just been talking about the importance of video, I figured that there is no better rewind episode to jump to today than when Justin Tamsit joined us on episode 120 to talk us through Facebook Live tips for the fitness industry. During the episode, JT shares advice on how to get people to watch your live video, tips to get people to interact when you go live, and how to plan your first broadcast. If you missed that episode, then go to today's show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, scroll down and click in the timeline for episode 120. Okay, FBP family, this is your last reminder because next week on Thursday, March the 19th, 2020, you'll have the opportunity to join friends and colleagues at the annual FBP family meetup at URSA 2020. Starting from the lobby of the convention center at 6.30 a.m., we walk and we talk for 60 minutes, sharing experience, ideas, and stories. Everyone from the FBP family is invited and we would absolutely love you to join us on the day. We'd also love to know who is coming along. So please head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, go to the top of the page and click on the tab called Meetup and you can register your details right there. Also, if you need any more information, then please email me directly at chantal at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you all for joining me for this week's show. Quick reminder that all the resources and the links to contact Dennis in today's episode can all be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. Active Management are a fitness business coaching company that help clients all over the world. And this month, I have a business tip for you all join the Active Management Facebook community. It's an amazing group and you'll meet like-minded fitness owners and managers from all over the world. All you need to do is go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Active Management Community. It's a highly engaging community where JT from Active Management shares loads of resources, things like photos from inside gyms, reasons to exercise, a monthly book club, challenges, and even ideas under 50 bucks. It's free and it is an awesome community. Once again, just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Active Management Community. As always, thank you all so much for joining me for today's episode. Enjoy your week ahead. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into lives of others. Mm -hmm.